Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review House of Gucci. I could really go through this whole entire review trying to put on an obnoxious Italian accent, but I'll refrain from doing that, unlike some of the actors in this movie. I went there. So this is from director Ridley Scott, who just had a killer film, The Last Duel, come out, which not that many people saw, but is in my top 10 of the year and I absolutely loved it. So I was very excited going into House of Gucci and being an Italian American and seeing some Italian people and <laughs> this movie is so trashy. And here's the thing, this looks like a Ridley Scott film, it's really well shot. So you have composer Darius Wolski who does a fantastic job of shooting this film. You have Harry Gregerson Williams, along with a killer soundtrack of songs, including Heart of Glass by Blondie, that was in the trailer, that really sets the stage, the costumes, the production design, the clothes have to look incredible in this film, and they certainly do. So from a technical standpoint, all of it's working well. And then you look at this two hour and 37 minute movie and realize this does not need to be two hours and 37 minutes. There's definitely moments that drag. There's also moments that feel really awkward and clunky in trying to navigate this narrative, which this is just a web of lies and deceit and backstabbing and murder. And you just have Patrizia Raggiani, who's played by Lady Gaga, who is just going for it, and I think it's too much. This feels like a caricature, and I have trouble at times taking this character seriously with her basically Russian accent, because she definitely doesn't sound Italian, and just, this was such a far cry from The Star Is Born. It made me really sad, because like you could just see like Lady Gaga was trying to act to the bleachers in the back, and it was just over the top and obnoxious. And then you have Adam Driver, who plays Maurizio Gucci, who is the other lead in this film, and Adam Driver's amazing. He just is. Was his accent amazing? Not quite. But he does such a fantastic job of being a very reserved, yet quirky and awkward character, who over the course of this film gets classier and classier with his dress, which is quite impressive, but he becomes more confident in who he is, and his relationship with Patrizia is a roller coaster ride, and full of melodrama, and ridiculousness, and over-the-topness, and then you have the rest of the Gucci clan here, and you have Al Pacino as Aldo Gucci, who, Al Pacino out! a bit, and it was so glorious. It made me so happy. He, uh, besides Driver, probably gives the best performance in this film, and I could see some best supporting actor love coming his way, but, like, he shows emotion and sleaziness. You have Jeremy Irons as Rodolfo Gucci, who's Adam Driver's father. He's not in the film that much, but I think he brings some great presence to the film as well. And then you have Jared Leto as Paolo Gucci, you know, the firecracker. And just, he's in a whole other movie. Him and Lady Gaga are in whole other movies that just don't fit the tone of this movie. But, like, you can't help but want to watch him. Because it's so absurd. Like, he just goes way over the top. Every choice he makes, he goes for a home run. And then you have likes of Jack Houston as Domenico De Sole, who's a consistent figure in the film, who's, I think he has a really solid performance. He doesn't get to do a whole lot, but like, I think he does a good job. Salma Hayek as Pina is a fun addition to the film. You have Camille Cotin as Paola, who's another woman in uh, Maurizio's life. And I feel like the cast is very hit or miss. There's some odd choices for some of the actors, and this story is just so over the top and cluttered and absurd, 
and just overly long. I felt like they could have trimmed a lot out and just really streamlined the story. But in general, it just, there's so many stretches of this film that feel so awkward and clunky. This kind of feels like some of the worst of Ridley Scott, but also moments of some of the best. There's one particular scene that I loved towards the end of the film where really like the last big stab you in terms of like, because you know, at this point there's no Gucci's in Gucci. And the last one at this dinner, after an amazing show on the runway, was some really top-notch, top-notch filmmaking from Ridley Scott. And I wish that a lot of the other scenes delivered on that kind of level of filmmaking, but they don't always. And it's awkward and weird and quirky and offbeat. And a lot of the times, I just, I feel like it's watchable and enjoyable enough, but not something where I'm like, this is a great film. And some of the performances were just, ugh. But in the end, I think this is a bit of a misfire for Ridley Scott, especially after The Last Duel, which I thought was absolutely amazing. And in the end, this is just some trashy, melodramatic crime drama that, you know, if you're ready for some of that, you have a whole meal full for two hours and 37 minutes. But those are my thoughts on House of Gucci. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.